sometimes when I'm dancing, it's like you forget. Like you're not trying to make moves, your body's just making them for you. And wow, that's, that's just how I dance. that's just like this creative energy going through you, and that energy is the same energy that's making everything in this earth, which is to me also science and art. Mm. So and thinking about like um, like being a creative genius is really like channeling that energy, and that can be through the writing process, through a dancing process, through a scientist's perspective, because you have to be kind of crazy in order to like <laughs> think that something's going to work that hasn't been proven yet. Like, yes. that's crazy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Flora Funga Podcast with your host, KK. This week, we have a special guest. Oh, Toast just decided to join me on the bed. We have a special guest today because... My sister is actually on, and we talk about how anybody and everybody can be a scientist. We like to say that on the podcast that once you have a question and a hypothesis, that you're already a scientist. You're already looking for the answer. You're already doing experiments or picking decisions that move you toward your destination. So... I hope you really enjoyed this episode. She's actually uh, one of my models for the (laughs) t-shirts. And yeah, so I hope you enjoy this episode. And it's also an in-person interview. So you'll be able to watch this on my YouTube channel as well. So enjoy. Toast also got a new rubber chicken. If you hear that in the background, it is Toast saying hello. Well, welcome, Carlene. This is a special, special, special episode that we have here today. So I have my sister, Carlene, a.k.a. Gibbs, here. And I kind of just wanted to go through what does it take to be a scientist? Kind of what is a definition in their eyes of, like, who a scientist is and can anybody be one? Um, So, yeah, give the listeners a little bit of who you are, pronouns, and how you got into science. For sure. I'm Carlene. My pronoun, my pronouns are preferred she, they. And anybody can be a scientist for sure. So kind of what got you into science? What was your, your childhood like with science? What kind of like molded you into being, wanting to be more into the science field? Mm. Um, I've always kind of had a brain that's work differently and I want to know why things work a certain way and I think that's just a scientist's brain as well Mm -hmm. um always wanting to kind of figure out how things work like what's the point (laughs) what's the purpose of everything of anything is there a purpose is there nothing what's connected all that kind of stuff um and that's kind of what I studied as a biologist and as a sustainability, GIS, biography, geography, all that kind of stuff is just figuring out how the world is working, how it's connected to us, how it's connected to everything else around it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people that approach me about being on the podcast, they're like, they have imposter syndrome like a lot of other people, and they kind of are afraid to be on because they're like oh my god I've looked at other people that you've interviewed and like I'm not a scientist I don't I don't fit into this box like these people are experts in something and I don't I don't feel like I'm smart enough or belong yeah and like what is your definition of a scientist and kind of why why is that the wrong way of thinking it from the, that point of view um Yeah, I think a lot of people think you need qualifications. (laughs) You need these kind of qualifications or certificates or degrees in order to be something, but I think that's how we get better at something or how in society like you can make money off of something is having a title, but you don't really need to have somebody tell you uh, that you're something in order to be it, you know? You don't need somebody to be like, oh... Uh, you have this degree, so you can practice science. No, you can yeah. practice science, and thereby you can go get a degree in it to make it more, whatever, earn money or expand it, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's all just what you want to be. And if you want to be something, if you want to study something, if you are even just interested about something, that makes it you. Like, yeah. yeah. 
I, I agree. I, I kind of think of, like, <clears throat> a scientist as anybody that starts with a question or you're questioning something, then you kind of are, or even, like, observing something. So you're kind of taking an observation or a hypothesis and kind of turning it into, like, an answer or, like, you're interested in even finding out what the answers are. Yeah. And so that's kind of why I call all my listeners my scientists because, like, you wake up in the morning and you're like, Hmm, what should I wear? Mm -hmm. Like, that's already, like, you're a making question. an observation, a yeah. question. Something you want to get to know more. And, yeah, that's daily. That's yes. happening the second you're waking up. Like, yeah. what should I do? How do I do this? Or you don't even have to think about it anymore. Yes. You're just acting on it. You're, like, you're a scientist questioning something, observing something, and solving something. It's really just answering a question to yourself as well. Yeah. So, like, besides science, what other interests um, or topics are you interested in? Mm. Um, so many things. Yeah, everything. you're vast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to dabble in everything. Um, I really enjoy, like, the arts. Um, arts and sciences really go together to me as well because mm -hmm. it's kind of just a creative outlet in some way. Um, yes. I'm a huge dancer as well, so music, dance, art. It's all an expression of who you are. Anything that involves uh, growth and like growing as a person, I'm into. Uh, I've been really into geography, astronomy, writing. I'm a big writer. Um, again, everything's kind of art to me as well. Science and art are like it's everything. Everything is science and art. Yeah, so I'm really into that kind of stuff. Mm, yeah, and like dancing. That's also like an art. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Just like expressing who you are is like part of science, but then like also art. Yeah. Um, sometimes when I'm dancing, it's like you forget. Like you're not trying to make moves; your body's just making them for you. And well, that's, that's just, how I dance. That's just like this creative energy going through you, and that energy is the same energy that's making everything in this earth, which is to me also science and art. Mm. So, and thinking about like. Um, like being a creative genius is really like channeling that energy and that can be through the writing process, through a dancing process, through a scientist's perspective because you have to be kind of crazy in order to like <laughs> think that something's going to work that hasn't been proven yet. Like yes. that's crazy. Yeah. Um, but in the best way. Outside the boundaries type of thing. For sure. Pushing bounds. Damn. Um, and then... I also want to cover, like, cooking. Like, do you kind of have that same flow mentality when you're cooking? Like, is that kind of how you come up with, like, ingredients of how to make meals? You just kind of, like, let your body make whatever you want? Or... Yeah, definitely. But also, what's funny is, like, a lot of people dance and cook at the same time. So that's mm. just, like, two arts collide. Literally, and it's very, cre it's very creative. To <laughs> <laughs> it's creative to be in the kitchen making something different, like, without using a recipe or even if you are make, using a recipe and putting your own spin on it, like that's very creative. And that's a scientist as well. Like you're thinking something's gonna taste good mm -hmm. and then your proof is that you eat it and it does taste good, you know? Or maybe it tastes bad and that's still a proof that it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> this, palm, this palm frond is going in my eyeball. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's crazy like how baking, compared to cooking even is too just because there's so many things that if you fuck up on like not adding enough baking soda or baking powder then like all of a sudden it's like nasty or yeah. rock hard or yeah it's really like a cause and effect like yeah. do you add too much of this it's gonna taste like this or you have no idea if this is enough salt and then you find out it's it true. was or it wasn't you're like instantly proving what you think mm -hmm. and just by tasting it yeah and then you can change it. True. Mm -hmm. And what are some of, like, your future goals with science? And kind of what was your idea about what you wanted to do while you are going to college versus now versus future? Mm -hmm. I started college with just, like, a basic biology degree, mm -hmm. thinking I was going to be a doctor. I really want to go in, like, podiatry, so oh. foot doctor. Or you did stuff? For sure. <laughs> 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 um, I always knew I wanted to help people, and the first thing is always, oh, you should be a doctor, mm, you know? Yeah. Um, 
then going through the courses, they were so difficult, and I did so bad in so many of them. <laughs> and then I started to do really well in more of like the geography mm. and the global health. And that's also when I got really interested in like traveling the world, and I studied abroad, and I studied um, like philosophy and English and Italian and other languages. Yeah. And I started to kind of change my mind or maybe not know what I wanted to do as much. And then I narrowed my degree to biology of global health. I knew I really wanted to study like world diseases and then the pandemic hit. It was wow. really, really relevant. And it was like scary, but amazing because I was learning about it and then it was happening. Yeah. Um, but I knew I didn't want to be a doctor anymore. I knew I didn't want to study that much anymore. I just wanted to like get going and get out into the world, oh. which is very like sciencey as well, like field work. Uh, so then I was like, oh, um, I really want to work with like people or the environment outside and do that. And so I'm glad I got my biology and global health degree, and then I got a sustainability and GIS, geographical information systems minor. Okay. And then, of course, the pandemic hit, and uh, there was no jobs anywhere. Mm -hmm. There was nothing. Yeah, uh, you graduated that. I graduated. Uh, okay. Like, the last six months of my college were all online because the like, oh. COVID had just hit. And then... I didn't get a job until later that fall, which was still decent, I guess. Um, but that's when I decided to work uh, as a lab technologist. And that was still science and very much using my degree and like lab tech stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was all in the lab and it was none of the field work, which I wanted. Yep. Um, so that was, when I, yeah, that was <laughs> when I realized I wanted more field work or just to like something different. Whatever it was, that's not what I wanted. Although it was using my degree, it's not exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Um, and then in the future, I mean, I've been pivoting so much lately. Especially, I mean, I thought I wanted to be an artist, as I am an artist. Like, I don't need to do art in order to be an artist. Like, as I am, I'm an artist. I'm a scientist. Mm -hmm. So now I know I don't necessarily need to pursue this big dream of being, like, an artist. I can kind of just make art and see what happens. Um, but with science, I'm really leaning towards being near the ocean, uh, incorporating more geography, more marine biology, and yeah, I've been expanding a lot with that. I don't know, I'm very excited to see, I'm sure my mind's going to change like a hundred more times, <laughs> but I'm really excited to see like where it goes with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were even looking up uh, last week your the title in your title pools. Yeah. Yeah, so why do you find that interesting? Um, I like the idea of this whole like, environment or, I guess, ecosystem underneath the water. Mm. Obviously, we don't always know what's going on underneath the surface. And so suddenly it's like emerging and you can look at all of it and it's not really what you'd expect like seeing a tidal pool is so cool like i'm sure a lot of people haven't even seen them yes yeah, i no. mean they're submerged most of the time but when we were younger and our like family lived in oregon and going on the coast and we could see those i just remember always like loving it it was so cool to look at everything whenever i'm by the water i always collect shells and rocks yeah. i just love to look at them um they're all so different but the tidal pools is really interesting too because it's such a biodiverse area and it's also the area that's really sensitive and affected by climate change and everything so by studying that area specifically you can really get a tell of a bigger picture of what's going okay. on or like what's really being affected because that area is close to shore but still very much part of the ocean that isn't uh, like investigated as much right right yeah we were just uh at the beach the other day and she was she bought some uh goggles and was just swimming and diving i was mermaiding yeah you were mermaiding for like 30 minutes and just like collecting we were collecting like seaweed we were collecting like i don't even know what the little asparagus looking plants are called but but we collected some things and we're gonna look under the microscope later and 
take a look because ocean ocean stuff really does fascinate me. Also, when I learned that there was mushrooms in the ocean. I didn't know that until you said that I, last week. Yeah, so shout out to Eric for showing us his reefing. <laughs> he, he does reefing and he was like, yeah, I, uh, th- th- that little thing right there, that's mushroom. And I was like, oh my god, there's saltwater mushrooms? That's like, so That's so funny to me. Um, and so, circling back to when you actually traveled to Rome, what was the science kind of like there? Like, how did you see other perspectives of people? Like, how did they treat science, scientists, mm. there compared to here? Huh, I don't really know. Also, at that time, they weren't offering any science classes, so okay. and at, I had to... Once I got back, I actually, that's when I changed my major because I wasn't going to graduate on time. Mm. But the next year, they offered chemistry, so I know that there's, like, mm. huge labs there, um, like, I'm sure in schools and stuff. But yeah. uh, science in general there, I think it's just maybe more... Like, no, I don't, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> I really don't There's know. a lot of cooking. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you, like, came across any, like, specific people that were, like, super passionate about different things, or was it a lot of, like, I mean, the It was a lot of, like, theology-based, yeah. okay. but in that sense, science is also, like, telling the truth to me, and that's when I learned a lot of different truths that I had no idea what they were. Like, learning Roman history exposed so many things I had no idea about the world. And maybe that's also science, like, the history of things and how the patterns come and go and stuff like that. And there's, like, history. Yeah, and there's, like, Roman history, which is super interesting. Uh, Art history. And, like, I learned a bunch uh, about, like, the building, architecture and everything. I guess that's science, too, like, putting together clay and bricks. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, cementing. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, just the architecture there, the patterns, stuff like that. Very mm. interesting mind, and then so much art and all the famous like museums, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, artists are always constantly learning about themselves and their process as well, which is kind of like science. Mm. Uh, you're constantly learning, constantly learning new things, yeah. constantly connecting new things. And, like, as an artist, you also do that by trying new techniques. And, like, I get bored of things really easily, so I draw a little bit, and then I'm like, "Mm, I kind of want to do something else, expand my mind, maybe I'll do paint. And same with science, like, "Mm, I'm going to try biology. Mm. You know, physics is really cool. (laughs) Or, like, all these different things. And, like, how are they all connected? What would your dream job be? Or if you had unlimited resources, what would you want to do? <clears throat> oh, like if I <laughs> like if I didn't have to make money, yes, and I could just do whatever, yes, I would I would love to be by an ocean and experience. I would just I don't know. I just want to wake up, like make art, walk around, lay in the sun, lay by the water. Mm-hmm. Um stuff that's fun to me is also like that um but if i could just create all the time maybe i wouldn't actually like this much i don't know but Mm. yeah my dream position would probably be something that i can like showcase what i'm working on without having to like put it out there in some way like it's really difficult to make art and have it be like read the way that you want it to be yeah yeah no that makes sense so when you say like create or do art what does that look like to you Mm, for me i think it's mostly writing and i do a lot of journaling yeah um and i'd like to write stories or i'd like to write about my life but I can't see myself doing that unless I'm going to reap a reward of money. So, and it's hard for me because it'd be so much work and it is so much work, like as I'm doing small bits of it. Yeah. But it's discouraging because it's not something I'd make money on for so long. Right. Um, And yeah, there's always ways you can make money, but I don't want to do that. I don't like the short, like, bursts of gratification of, like, posting something or, like, 
fame on the internet from posting. I just want to leave something here that can be interpreted in whatever way people want it to be. And yeah, I'm probably going to make money on that someday. But if I didn't have to do that, or if I already had the money and then could just freely put it out there, it would probably come out completely different mm. than if I was trying to make money off of it, you know? Okay. But just by making something or writing something or making art that I like, and I guess just like sketching, I don't know, um, that's not a way to make money. So it doesn't seem as important, even though that's what I want to do. Okay. Yeah, it's like the little things. Yeah. Hmm. And that's all, yeah. Definitely. Okay, so then how do you how do you feel like you uh, participate in doing science daily? Um, I think having like an open day where you can just and I kind of live this way because I don't have like a nine to five or anything like yeah. that, not a strict schedule. So I'm able to just like, oh, what do I want to do today? <laughs> and especially living in New York, like, oh, maybe I can go walk around and explore this area. And, like, being, a, like, just exploring new areas and trying new foods, <laughs> that counts. <Yeah. laughs> like, trying something new or, yeah, I ask myself a question, like, oh, I wonder what's over there. And mm -hmm. then you go <laughs> look, and sometimes it's nothing what you think it is. <laughs> it's like, oh, what is this? Um, yeah, ask myself so many questions every day. I talk it to myself and my mind all day long mm. about what I think's going on in the world or whatever, <laughs> or what I can do to grow. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm like a little plant, always Love growing. It. Mm -hmm. Always growing toward the sun. Yeah. The sun in the bed. And what is your favorite type of science? Probably anything studying the body mm. is very interesting to me, which is kind of why I thought I wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, but I really just like how like the systems in our bodies are working. I really like psychology, yeah. like how our brain's working. Um, very much like wellness and spirituality also comes from my mind. Um, mm -hmm. And that's not what science is. But, again, it's using your brain, which is your body, which is this earth, which is science. So, I like studying organisms in general. So, yeah, hmm. biology, for sure. Yeah. And how can, like, science with yourself versus, like, science with, like, nature differ? So, like how we were talking yesterday about having a relationship with like nature and things like that like how is each i guess important to you mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i think they really need to go together and when i take care of my body i'm thinking like my physical body so like eating exercise in your mind and then being in nature and like having a relationship with nature really fills my soul and my spirit which is connected like to my mind and thereby to my body so it's all, again it's all connected when you take away one thing like when I start to neglect my uh like my mental health you know your physical body suffers and when I start to neglect my physical health my mental health struggles mm. and even just by going out into nature like for a walk it's such a good way to like release whatever's in your body mm -hmm. and whatever's in your mind because nothing matters <laughs> and like <laughs> like literally just go stare at a tree and touch like I'll, I'll just go to the park and sit under a tree and start breathing and mm -hmm. start like feeling the grass and ground myself until I feel better and it really doesn't take that long as long as you're open to like letting your body think and do whatever it wants to do in that span of time yeah um yeah I kind of just let things be mm. and then I'm like all right as it is I'm just sitting here and I'm just being and there's nothing wrong with this present moment there's nothing wrong with what's going on I'm sitting under a tree I'm touching a palm like what could <laughs> possibly be wrong right now because yeah the present moment is all that really matters and once I start to think about that my mind starts to chill my body feels regulated and I'm like breathing I tend to hold my breath when I'm stressed or like have anxiety so like okay i'm breathing i feel the wind <laughs> like it's okay when the wind picks up i'm like it's okay 
Yeah, that's like this whole interview. It's been like gusting wind and like these palm fronds are just like grazing mm -hmm. the top of my butt a little bit. <laughs> so what are like some specific obstacles that you find in science right now? Mm. Um, maybe just the lack of information of some things. Mm. Um, I mean, if I'm curious about something and I, I look it up, there's not always what I'm looking for. It's always some kind of other information that kind of pertains to it, but it's not, again, it's not exactly what I'm thinking. So then I'm digging more, I'm digging more. So kind of going through the resources and like what resources out there are even not real or fake, but just like relevant mm -hmm. enough to consider and like taking everything with a grain of salt. Cause I'm trying not to like believe everything you read just yep. because it says it's science or like it says it's this or this stat doesn't mean there's so many other things. Like I've really learned to go through the knowledge and go through the sources to see if it is like, relevant to me. Um, but yeah, I guess I struggle kind of with that. Okay. Um, and do you see, like, that's similar to what other people, like, in science in general, is there specific obstacles that, like, we as a society need to work on? Or, yeah, I feel like spreading of, like, improper or non-scientific stuff, like, people are always just like, oh, yeah, I, I Googled that, and, like, that's yeah. the answer. And it's like their first thing they look at is what they think mm. is true instead of oh even just three like i double checked myself or yeah. i triple checked because yeah i guess i don't realize if people other people are just taking the first thing they see in face value and they're like this is true <laughs> true um, and i feel like that's how like more fake or in skewed information is spread um and then it's like well who do you even believe because who's gonna believe me and like what are my credentials um, or what are their credentials? Or does that even matter? Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess with anybody being a scientist, then anybody can say whatever, but that doesn't mean everybody should say whatever. Yeah, and also <laughs> you can say whatever, but just take in all the information and then whatever actually resonates, keep that, and the rest you can just let go because, hmm. yeah, there's so much information out there. How are we supposed to sift through all of it in a in the correct way and process and live i don't know i think we're asking ourselves to do so much all the time yeah especially like maybe as a scientist because i'm constantly like seeking some kind of answer right that's what it kind of feels like um you have to be okay with not finding the answer or the answer is different than you think and mm -hmm. accepting it as well yeah because some people just want to prove their point and that's not really science that's a thought or like a feeling or something but I think leaning towards whatever the truth is uh but again everybody's truth is different <laughs> I'm really good at counter counteracting myself <laughs> like I see all sides so I'm really yeah. just like ah, I get it yeah I get nothing <laughs> that's actually how I've been like taught also to like if you want to google something like if you're like do bees hibernate we're just going to make that up. So do bee, bees hibernate is what people can Google, but then you also say, why do bees not hibernate? And see, mm. like, what, like, the Google searches or, yeah, like, results the of the wording each. of it actually changes it completely, too. Yeah. So it's like, oh, are you even asking the right question? Mm, it's like mm. the chat GPT. You got to you gotta prompt it correctly mm -hmm. or it has you no idea. You got a primer. Otherwise, <laughs> you might get something completely different. It's and, true. Yeah. Be aware of that. Yeah. And people that are listening from uh, Rome, if you do have, <laughs> like, circling back to that, if you do have specific, like, nerdy jobs or um, specific things that Rome highlights, please shout us out. The and agriculture, correct, I'm thinking about that. Yeah, like, correct yeah. me. If you're like, oh, my God, I wish I could yell at them. I know, like, saying something, as like, my mind's blank and I'm just like, I don't know what I studied. But, like, <laughs> it was, I mean, I'm going back soon, so. For sure. Yeah. What are nice. what are your uh, plans in Spain to do with science? Mm, I uh, was really started thinking about the oceanography first because there is the ocean there, mm -hmm. and like being on the coast, and I'm like, oh, I want to do surfing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could study the ocean and have fun. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but 
yeah, I'm really excited to see what I get into, get into there. Let me know if you have any opportunities because, I mean, I'm going there to go there. <laughs> I'm open to so many different things. Um, I'm excited to see what happens. I have no, I honestly have no idea. Yeah, and when are you going? I'm going end of May to the end of June. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like one month. Wow. Yeah. It's going to be a life-changing month. I'm going to miss sure. you. I'm going to miss you. Can't it's wait to crazy. see see all the pics. Maybe I'll try to come visit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, if you have a nerdy job, for sure, I would love to come interview you and also double it up with visiting Carleeners over here. Mm -hmm. Um. And so we kind of talked about what the biggest obstacle in science is to you. And so what do you think it, you're, like, most excited about in science? Like any breakthroughs or any, like... Yeah. Oh, there's so many new things for me, especially, like, learning more about space. <laughs> um, it's something that I feel like is on the news a lot right now astrology. is space. Yeah, astrology, astronomy, even, like, the landing on Mars. They're, like, trying to predict if it's going to happen in the next 30, 50 years. And I'm sure they're... Um, I don't actually know what's going on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, stuff like that is so interesting. And, like, is there life in other areas? And for me, it's of course. And learning about multidimensional things literally... <laughs> like rockets my brain um, <laughs> I think about that a lot and like dimensions and the physics of that and again we say everything's connected and you know like the energy is literally connected in everybody and everything so studying that more and like quantum mechanics um, that goes along with that this very vast amount of knowledge that I hope I continue to learn about and I'm just excited to learn more about because I yeah. think people are finally finally people are starting maybe to talk about it in a more relative term um, yeah I'm excited to see the science behind more space stuff like, yeah. give me more give me more space stuff give me more aliens give me more planets sun moon we love the moon yes. um, all of that kind of stuff Oh, yeah. Do you know the definition um, or the word citizen science? No. It is, like, pretty much kind of what we're talking about, how normal, quote-unquote, people can be scientists. So that's what a lot of mycologists are, is, like, a citizen science where they do, like, the mushroom collecting and then enter it into iNaturalist. So it's, like, people that are really interested and passionate about science, but they don't have, like, a degree in mm. set science. And so that's actually a term, citizen scientist, okay. where it's just, like, regular people are, like, if you have, like, this, this would be, like, Kevin if he had, like, his own, like, lab at his house just, like, doing random, like, PCR testing or, like, microscope yeah. stuff. So that's, like, what citizen science do, scientists do, and that's, like, a huge um, movement within the mycology department because a lot of people don't have their degree in it, but a lot of people are passionate about it, so they just, like, do all of these things for fun as yeah. a hobby. That makes um, me think of, like, just nature walks and stuff yeah. and how people, yeah, just, like, finding cool things that the earth is creating. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, mushroom hunting, literally. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so do you think that, obviously, citizen science um, to be practiced in the general public is important? Mm, yeah, I yeah. think it's really important. Um, maybe people can, um, yeah, they don't need any type of degree or anything, and then being validated by other people saying, hey, I think that's interesting mm -hmm. too, and then you can form a little friend group and yeah. be like, let's go look at plants together, let's go look at the sky, and let's go, like, I don't know, search for something or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like the idea of citizen, citizen science. Right, like the star party that yeah, we Yeah, uh, just like little groups of people, like you all find something you you have in common that you yes. like to study or just are interested in, and then you ask more questions just to each other. Like you don't even need to use Google if you have people that know more than you or less mm -hmm. than you and you can just learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And you just bounce ideas off of each other. You probably learn even more just by like a smaller group of people very intimate yes you don't feel as scared to like am i gonna learn this my 
going to be able to like figure out this equation. It's more just like, am, do I want to learn it? Sure. And then you're with friends that help you do it or community citizens. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of um, think of like mycological societies or like you were saying, nature walks or plant ID things. And yeah, it just kind of gets like the community or locals around you interested in like similar things. Mm -hmm. um, last week we actually went to, I guess it's called a star party. Mm -hmm. And so we went to so the cool. Wildwood Community Center here and they, people brought their huge ass uh, telescopes and we were looking at the moon. We were looking, what other stars we were we looking at? Mars, we saw Sirius, yep. the brightest star. Um, we saw some constellations like the Pleiades and the Hyades. Hi yeah, the dog. Yeah. So, um, forget yeah, the that. hunter. Okay. What is it? Churon? God, I actually oh. don't even. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, very cool. Star party. Yeah. I love that idea. Yeah, I bet all of them were technically citizen science or. Like, or like they used to be yeah. scientists and then they're retired and you continue to be a scientist mm -hmm. after you're done getting paid for it and you're just now you're a citizen of science yeah. I, guess. I like that idea that was super fun and i want to do more of those really in the future really what are some key uh qualities and skills that people should have to be like a successful scientist mm. i think Asking questions, like not being afraid to ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are scared to like ask stupid questions. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a stupid question. No. Um, yeah, try to like think differently. So just like expanding your brain a little bit of like maybe I think this is one way, but let me actually think of it the opposite way. Maybe it's not true, but even just being curious about whether it is or not. I feel like documentation of things, um, and just like taking notes on things and mm -hmm. like observation of things. Guilty note taker. Literally. <laughs> on everything. Only Movies. <laughs> like we're watching a movie and we're writing down like, <laughs> random shit. Oh know. my god, we're growing up when we <laughs> made those books. We went to the zoo. Oh my yeah, gosh, you the can... zoo books. Yeah, no. We were, did we take photos or did we print them off of the internet and just like write stuff that we documented yeah. that we saw at the zoo? Or yeah, were the photos in there from our campus? I, I don't remember if we had them at that time. I think it was a combination of our camera photos, or we just Googled those photos, or... I don't think Google was... Uh, it must have been. Yeah, no, there's definitely images that you but could yeah, see. But yeah, we definitely would just... Just Google a I thing. Think we would just, <laughs> I think we would just bring, like, little notebooks or something. And, oh, yeah. And Or we would just go home and just remember everything about all these animals. We would go there all the time. Yeah, we and, had a membership. Yeah, and we would just read, like, the information that was provided at the zoo. You know, like, they have the plaques and stuff. Mm -hmm. We would just chill there and literally observe these animals all the time. And then we created a whole... Book, a zoo book. Yeah, zoo book <laughs> of all the things we kind of knew about them, and maybe it was an accumulation of the knowledge from the zoo, and then us just like what we liked about them, mm -hmm. like their colors, uh, like how they were behaving, yeah. and stuff like that. That was so exciting for us. Yeah, and that was like where Animal Planet was a huge part of my life too. I remember at dinner time, like I I got to watch Animal Planet for whatever when. Uh, this was in Oak Grove and before, so, like, I would watch Animal Planet, and then at dinner time, I would share a fact of what I learned, because so I would cute. watch it so much, and they were like, okay, if you bring a fact, then, like, you'll, like, That's okay, so like, you, like, actually yeah. learn stuff. I don't even remember that. Yeah. I love that. I would, like, go by ponds and collect dead fish and put them in a box. <laughs> I, like, stole, not stole, I guess stole, um, a, b a bunch of tadpoles and, like, kept them in jars, and then they all died, and, like, my mom Ooh. had to dump them out, so I liked dead things, and <laughs> things, that, things that were also alive, or I tried to keep alive as pets, you know, like, I would collect frogs, yeah, bugs, frogs, I've always collected leaves, mm -hmm. even if they were just, like, I don't know, they always looked cool to me, and, uh, yeah. So being curious about things, whatever you like, like if something looks pretty to you, gravitate towards that, because <laughs> also like everything's a reflection, so if you find something interesting or pretty, it's also something in yourself that maybe you can like learn about, mm -hmm. and I feel like that is also really interesting to me, so if I find a cool rock, I'm like, ooh, 
This rock's really cool. It's yeah, bumpy. I'm like, I'm bumpy. I'm pretty. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to yes, literally, literally connect. I am nature. And oh like, my I'm god. Pretty. Yeah. That's gonna be like the title of this. <laughs> I'm bumpy. I'm pretty. I'm a scientist. <laughs> yes. I'm a bumpy scientist. And I'm beautiful. I'm a beautiful bumpy scientist. <laughs> oh, I love. I that. love our lumps. I love our natural bodies. How everything's natural. Yeah. Yes. Everything in its natural state is so beautiful. <laughs> natural habitat. It's natural habitat. Natural beings. Oh. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I love you. What what would be like some advice that you would give people that are trying to be more into the science realm, or how do people like get more get started? Or mm-hmm. yeah, mm, I think something that you maybe always wanted to do that you don't think you could do so like. Oh, I've always wanted to be an astronaut, but obviously that's not practical, so I'm just not going to, like, study it at all, but yeah, just, start, yeah, just start looking into stars, or start looking into the things that are involved in that, mm-hmm. and see what interests you, and then just dive, like, literally just deep dive. I yeah, I go into spurts of, like, one little thing, and then I deep dive on it, and learn everything about it, because, you know, the internet's fast. Um, or books, you know, or even just making your own connections. But yeah, things that you're curious about that, again, you don't need to make money from, but things that you still are just curious about, I guess. Yeah. Um, Yeah, get curious and start pursuing those things and don't just wonder about it. Like, actually, you don't have to act even on it. You can just look into it more or Mm. think about it more. And then things will just start compiling of more knowledge and you'll get more interested in things and maybe you'll be like oh actually th- that's not what i thought it was but from that i found this and yeah. this is really interesting and then deep dive and then oh from this i found this and yeah see what you like and keep it going and just yeah if it makes you happy if it makes you interested usually that's a good direction yeah yeah like imagine like you wanted to be the astronaut but then also you found that that one star is super fucking interesting like the serious mm-hmm. star and like now you're the expert yeah. on that star and everybody goes to you yeah. for that specific thing it does feel good to like be an expert in one thing niche down baby yeah that's what i was taught yeah i don't do that that often but in reality i guess i do i just love so many things mm-hmm. i think i know everything about big things but really i probably know a lot about just a few things mm-hmm. you know and loving everything but, yeah. and that's that's good um yeah anything you're really curious about deep dive mm. and just go for it and see what you find because it's probably not going to be what you think and let yourself be surprised Surprise. and then ask more questions mm. and then keep going oh yeah mm-hmm. here's a here's a big a big thinker how do you think citizen science can address big issues like climate change or the public health crisis? Mm. I think, like, on a micro scale, like, yeah. Th- yeah, things that people know just as, like, being people, being citizens, like, we really understand what's going on on a level that's intimate, and that intimacy, I think, is what can really help us, because... On a really broad scale, like, you have these huge companies or governments doing the research, I guess, but they're doing things on such a macro scale that has almost nothing to do with what we're experiencing daily, you know? Because daily, yeah, things are completely different, and again, depending on where you are, it's completely different as well, so... Um, And then you're just, like, you are the expert of your own life, you're the expert of your own community, so as a citizen... Um, citizen science and with a small group of people you start talking about the things that you're noticing just in your little area or in your little life even though your life is huge you know so you start like saying those things out loud and then you realize other people um, are also noticing that and maybe on a big scale they have no idea what's going on Mm. I hope that wasn't too vague to understand but like even just water issues, you know, like if you have a little pond by your house and you and your neighbors know that something mm. about that is weird or <laughs> scary something's or up. something's up with it and it's bubbling toxic fumes, <laughs> um, you know, like on, on a big scale, like they don't even know that it's there. Again, this is all like made up, but like 
like they don't even know it's there so you're the one that's gonna have to take charge and be like this is happening i see that this is looking this way which means it has this in it you know mm. and i think by noticing those kind of things that's the small changes that can be made daily or in a group or in a community um, to help in ways that we can't ask other people or other companies to do for us because they're yeah. not going to. Mm -hmm. And then we can't be mad that we're not getting funding. I don't know what I'm talking about. But, <laughs> but like, I don't know. I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly. <laughs> like, Invisible rant. I know. Um, I actually, when I, when I was in college, I was trying to get this grant and it was literally for what i was just talking about like there was oh. there was some kind of waste pond area that was next to this huge like uh -uh, 3m company <laughs> that was like dumping <laughs> dumping their chemicals into this little pond and then there was people in that community that there was multiple kids that found out that they had cancer and i didn't get the grant i wonder why because they were like yeah no she doesn't need to know about this but um I was so mad about it, and so that kind yeah. of thing. Um, so that's, you know, that stuff's happening everywhere. We just don't really, we're not aware of it, or we don't care. Mm. And, you know, big companies don't care. That's so sad. Uh, big governments don't care. So we have to care. And in order to be a scientist, you really have to care about what you're interested in, because nobody else is going to do it for you. Nobody's going to be interested, and nobody's going to be like, hey, you should study this. Yeah. If you're the only one thinking about it. You want to put my phone up there? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I was actually just thinking about that grant today. As I was like, yesterday or two days ago, I was looking at astrology grants and like, oh, oh I could just, yeah, like people, um, like nonprofits are posting their grants. Mm -hmm. Like, I could just study something on my own and yeah. like, submit it. And then I was thinking about this grant that I did in college and it was so bad. I literally stayed up the night before and drank like energy drinks <laughs> and stayed in the library and wrote the whole thing because I was such a procrastinator. Oh and of, yeah, of course I didn't get it because I wasn't even well done. Well, um, it, was okay. it, was, it was okay. You were a good writer. It was okay. Um, I was proud of it in the moment. I was like, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> yeah, I was. And then I did it. I'm like, okay. Um, so yeah, stuff oh. like that. Yeah, it's cool. And do you think uh, we as people can also make a change with like the bigger like issues like yeah. how, how can normal people just like make a difference with like the higher up yeah i think issues. that also goes with believing in things and not believing in things so when you're listening to all of this like knowledge from bigger companies or bigger governments whatever um taking that with your own brain and be like, okay, does this make sense in our world right now? Does this even apply? Is this accurate? Is this skewing towards a certain perspective that is completely negating a whole nother one? Because uh, again, it's really a whole picture kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like as a scientist, you have to step back and look at the big picture in order to see any of the small things or vice versa. Um, but yeah, doing things, you can for sure, everybody's so capable of making change, although we don't think, I mean, it's not going to be easy on a macro scale, not going to be easy, but maybe doing small things will make it easier. Yeah. Or maybe it'll, all you need is one, like, keyhole <laughs> to go through <laughs> in order to, like, bust through whatever you need to, um, but if you can find, like, an outlet, Yes, you can always make change. Yeah. You can always, we're so much more capable than we think. We're just told we can't do these things because we're not supposed to or we're not allowed to. Or maybe it goes away, it goes against like, the old way of thinking. Yep. Or an old world thing. Say you're lying. Yeah, and they're like, you can't think like that because it's different than mine. Or, or it goes against what I'm making money, money off of. You know? Yeah. I'm like, okay, that doesn't mean it's not true or that you're wrong. It's true. Or whatever so again have your own thoughts <laughs> stand strong to what you want to like look into even if other people are saying that's crazy because odds are you're probably just onto something that they aren't getting mm. and they wish that they're like wow i can't believe they're so strong about something that's not true and you're like hee hee i don't care it's true <laughs> you don't need to prove it to anybody but yourself if you keep going and then sooner or later sooner or later you don't have to prove it to It'll just showcase the mm -hmm. truth. That's what I feel like science is too. It's just like showing what 
what's going on, um, as it is. But it's really interesting. Yeah. Well, I have two questions left that I ask all of my guests, and it is how can flora and fungi influence the future? just kind of, it's cute. I just wanted it. 
and this one looks like a broken shell oh, that had barnacle? that had like barnacle or other shells on it, uh, kind of like a corally piece. But I don't know. I just like to pick up the strange ones or anything that I could find. And if I have like a slight connection, I'm like I'm taking it. Oh my god! Um, with grace and with thank you, universe, and like give it a new life and give it love. Um, you didn't kiss one of this one in the back. Thank you. you. <laughs> I said you're mine. <laughs> I took it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I always say, like, thank you, and I'm very grateful for the universe when I take things, because I'm not trying to upset any balances, and I really believe in that as well. Like, I don't just take things that aren't mine, but I think if I enjoy it more, why not? And now, we, now we're learning about it. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so cute. Oh, so, yeah. Well, thank you again, and I hope to have you on in the future. So, yeah, thanks thank for finally you. making an appearance and visiting me in Florida. Yeah. Yeah.